We are entering week eight, P. And waiver wire time is not a good time right now, man. A lot of injuries happen in week seven. And we're here to navigate you through. You're with your host, Justin Henry and Prabhat Parmar here. And man, we got to talk about it, P. There were some major injuries, especially at the wide receiver position. Two teams lost both of their starting receivers heading into this week. Uh, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, both out. Uh, looks like <clears throat> Ayuk is out for the season. Debo Samuel is going to be out for an extended period of time with pneumonia. And then for Tampa Bay, we got Mike Evans mm. who suffered a, a pretty bad hamstring injury. And then obviously Chris Godwin looks like he suffered a season-ending dislocated ankle, man. Waivers right now, Peter. There's not a whole lot of sexy names out there, but it's it's one of them times where we're going to have to come up with some options right now to help our fantasy teams. Yeah, you know, I mean, definitely a lot of tough blows, a lot of mainstays and a lot of people's fantasy lineups um, went down and they're going to be down for a period of time. But I mean, what that means is for the fantasy <clears throat> waiver wire, at least, you know, it means that there's some people out there to grab, you know, there's some some ways that we can help you guys bridge those gaps. Um, so there's going to be a lot of fluctuation and um you know that's a, that's why we're here to give you the game, uh, bring you the game. So. Well, we're gonna we're gonna go over a few names today, and some that are stepping into immediate opportunity. And I think that's one of the things is there there is gonna be some question marks when it comes to the actual production, right? Because a lot of these yeah. things we're gonna talk about are unproven. Some of them are rookies. Some of them are stepping into first time mm -hmm. opportunities. So if you guys have questions about specific players, make sure to drop them in the chat. We will go over them as the show goes on. But P, obviously, I talked about Debo Samuel dealing with pneumonia. It's expected that he might miss a week or two or three. Uh, pretty pretty severe. You know, I think it was like, oh, he's sick. Why isn't he playing? We found out later that this was something that's that actually had him in the hospital. And then Brandon Ayuk as well dealing with, a uh, obviously, a torn ACL. Glad he got the pay, but you hate to see him go down. Who do you think can step in here for the Niners side at wide receiver? Man, so, yeah, a lot of injuries the Niners are dealing with, but – you know what? One thing about the Niners is they are pretty deep at the wide receiver position. Not the sexiest names, but first name I got here for you, Ricky Pearsall. Now, look, check this guy out. He's already had an eventful start to the season, right? Drafted in the first round by the Niners. Unfortunately had, you know, got shot. A bullet went through the chest and he's out here in week seven giving you guys the game. So, you know, it, with that being said, he's already won at life. Uh, you know, if he could take a bullet through the chest, you know, I'm sure some football injuries, you know, <laughs> he won't have to worry about those. But long story short, you know, Ricky Pearsall, um, I'm curious to see how Shanahan's going to actually use him. Uh, you know, he, uh, you know, what role he's going to play. I see him actually being somebody who does, you know, work the middle more in that slot role. Somebody who does provide a safer floor. Well, the uh, the upside may be capped. Um, I'm excited to see what he does have in store, right? Like I mentioned, he's already a first-round pick. All of the injuries that have happened leaves this door wide open for these wide receivers. And, you know, there's other guys that here that we're, we are going to talk about, but Ricky Pearsall is one of these guys that, uh, you know, that I do anticipate getting a large uptick in usage. Well, first round receiver, it's like the team drafted him to be a part of this offense and long term. So you spend and invest mm -hmm. a, a pick. There was something because the team already had Devo and Ayuk, and I know it was a little bit of a protected pick, but they had also signed mm -hmm. Jawan Jennings to an extension as well. So this team obviously saw something in him that let them believe he can be a vital part of this offense. It just remains to be seen now how much of a part of this offense he is. He's going to get a good crack at it, had five targets in the week seven game. So we know that Brock is going to at least throw him the football. And over the course of the season, like we said, he's going to have his opportunity here over the next couple of weeks uh, before the team, they head into a week nine bye. So he'll have this week and then probably the week after that, at least to show what he's capable of, but has flex appeal, I would say, in your PPR leagues, yeah. uh, in your little bit deeper leagues. Another option yeah, for the yeah. Niners here, though, P, obviously, is we talked about him at length over the course of the year. Um, and Jawan Jennings, man, he's he's been one of those guys, P, where somehow, some way, he's still a top 30 guy on the season. He's ranked wide receiver number 21 in PPR leagues off the strength of that 40-point game he had earlier. Missed the game last week, but 
He's, un, you know, a lot of people probably dropped him once. Brandon Ayuk was mm-hmm. healthy and looking good. We saw Debo Samuel um, obviously start to look the part a little bit more, came back from his injury. And it was like, uh, we saw Jawan Jennings get thrown away. But there's a, a chance that he returns for this week eight game. So you'd want to make sure that that happens and avoid spending too much. But with Brandon Ayuk out, Jawan Jennings should be on the flex wide receiver three radar in certain weeks. So he's he's one of those players who we've already seen provide, you know, like with Ricky Pearsall, we have to see what's going to happen with him, which with Jawan Jennings, we know Brock will look his way in crucial situations and get him the football. So I think when it comes to Jawan Jennings and Ricky Pearsall, I'd rather have yeah. Jawan Jennings and Pearsall. But Pearsall is probably going to be the easier to, of the two to obtain. You're going to have to spend a lot of fab to get Juwan Jennings, unfortunately, especially for those who are without one of those receivers that we talked about. But I think it's worth it right now at a time when we know he can produce at wide receiver three flex levels. Yeah, I do think Juwan Jennings is probably had, definitely has the higher ceiling, right? And one thing that you also want to consider, uh, the Niners struggle in the red zone. Right. And when he's in, he gets targeted heavily in the red zone. So you can, you know, look at that for, um, you know, for what it is. Um, he's going to fill out in that X receiver, whereas I see Ricky Pearsall filling more, like I mentioned, the slot. So, uh, you know, where they need help, right? They need help in the slot. They need help getting these yards while CMC's out, while Debo's out. Uh, as far as who I would prioritize between the two, I'm probably prioritizing Jawan Jennings a bit more so than Ricky Pearsall, but I think that that offers a little bit more, you know, I think Ricky Pearsall's role may grow as the season goes on. So there's a little bit more long-term value uh, for Ricky Pearsall, but you could probably get him a lot cheaper too. Well, and it was curious, you know, I don't know if we could pull up the graphic again that showed the fab percentage, but it it looks like the sentiment here is that Ricky Pearsall Mm. should be the priority over uh, over Jawan Jennings. And I don't see it that way. I just think that there's too many question marks when it comes to Pearsall and his his, you know, his participation in this offense. Right. Especially once Debo gets back. This isn't a young rebuilding team that needs to focus on getting wide receivers, you know, involved in the op. They need to win football games. And right now with the losing record, it's one of those things where we have to see him perform. We got to see Jawan Jennings, who a guy who has been participating all season long, come in. And so I know one of the questions that that a lot of people have is like, why would you pick up Jawan Jennings? Because he's hurt. Uh, the Niners mm-hmm. are hopeful that he will return for the week eight game. And so that's the expectation here. And the other thing there is that you also have to wait on the bye week. So that's a little bit of the risk that is associated with picking up either Jawan Jennings or picking up a Ricky Pearsall is that the bye is coming and that Debo may be healthy once the time returns. Heading into... Uh, I, I want to ask a little trade question here before we get into the Tampa Bay side of things, P. Um, Mm -hmm. When this is also trade season, right? And there's a trade that Mm -hmm. came in, J.K. Dobbins for Marvin Harrison. And I understand, like, right now, the receiver position, you probably lost some players. Are you looking to make moves like that, trading a running back away for a receiver, this specifically J.K. Dobbins for Marvin Harrison, who's been a little disappointing as of late? You know what? This is a great question, right? J.K. Dobbins is somebody we actually talked about a lot being a sell high candidate. You know, one thing about J.K. Dobbins, you know, just with how this entire season is going, he's never had a full healthy season. Um, you know, I hope that he does this this week and or this year rather. But that is a move that I would take. One reason. Uh, one reason is because I just feel like. Marvin Harrison Jr. has a higher ceiling. You know, I feel like as the season progresses and as they go on, they're going to utilize him more. And as he get, you know, continues to gain his footing, he'll be a little bit more consistent than he has been as of late. But the other reason is you got J.K. Dobbins relatively cheap. So that probably means that you already have two other running backs that you can, you know, have in your starting lineup, right? So that's a move that I would do uh, if I'm the J.K. Dobbins owner. I would probably ask for a little bit more just based off of the nature and how, you know, Marvin Harrison has been playing, but that's a move that I would do. Yeah. And I think Marvin Harrison, it's a rough stretch of games coming up here. They play some elite defenses, but in the fantasy playoffs, he has some pretty friendly matchups. So you are playing the upside here. Whereas I think JK Dobbins is more of a floor play. You know, he's kind of a a weekly running back too. So I'm agreeing with you there. I think this is the the, the type of move that I would make if I had a JK Dobbins 
And especially if I was down one of these receivers, there's been a lot of positions. Um, and one of the questions that came in was, would you prioritize Drake May or Russell Wilson? And the good thing is we're going to be talking about both of those quarterbacks mm -hmm. here very soon. But I think let's talk first about this Tampa Bay, this Tampa Bay situation, because we saw both of their starting receivers go down on Monday night football. Unfortunately, man. And, and obviously Mike Evans caught his hundredth ball, his hundredth touchdown. And then obviously suffers the injury. Chris Godwin was in for a career season. And that's saying a lot for Chris Godwin because he had a, he's already had great seasons. Um, and he obviously is going to be missing the year. Who tops the list for you, man? Because seeing him go down, was it was sad, man, because he had been the best receiver in football. It was one of those feel-good stories. He tore his ACL a couple of years ago. And he's going to be a free agent this year, man. It was it sucked to see Chris Godwin go down. It does. It does. You know, I, I hope for the best for him. You know, you've seen him whimpering. Well, you know, something something along the lines of, well, that's my career. Um, I, you know, I'm praying that he comes back, praying that he makes a full recovery. Uh, for those Chris Godwin owners, me included, you know, I actually traded for him in a few in a few leagues. So, um, oh, you know, I actually traded with you in a few leagues and you <laughs> gave me Chris Godwin where, you know, it. you can't predict injury. But I'm going to tell you like this how this offense is actually going to go. I think they're going to lean a little bit more on the run. They do have a lot of youth at wide receiver, right? They have uh, Trey Palmer, who I actually think is going to be the one who fits more into the, uh, the Mike Evans role, right? The true yes. X wide receiver. He's somebody right now that you can pick up. Uh, I think that Cade Auden is actually a strong pickup as well. He's probably going to be the focal point of that offense. A question that did come in just while we're on the topic is where does uh, you know, Sterling Shepard, where does he fit in this? Uh, Sterling Shepard has the most experience out of this wide receiver core as of now, right? Um, but I think that their goal would be to get Trey Palmer more involved because they're actually invested a draft pick into him. Um, and I think that he, you know, like I mentioned, he's going to fit more into that Mike Evans role where they're taking deep shots to Trey Palmer. Uh, so, and you can also get him relatively cheap, right? He only had three targets and one, uh, one reception for 16 yards. Uh, but I obviously that is going to grow with just how everything turned out. So I like Trey Palmer relatively not owned at all. He's somebody that you can go out there and grab. Uh, and I do think a lot more people are focused on other positional players. So you can probably get Trey Palmer for cheap. Uh, but other those other players we're going to talk about here as well. Yeah, and you know, one of the things we saw was he immediately stepped into that Mike Evans role, play over 70% of the snaps. And so we know that he's obviously going to be in that role. And, you know, you might start to look at, you know, he played more snaps than uh, than, than Jalen McMillan, who I'm going to talk about here in a second, or maybe Sterling Shepard might be an option here. And it's like, you know, at some point, all these receivers are going to have opportunity. Baker Mayfield has been one of the better quarterbacks in fantasy, but you alluded to it, and that's sticking to the run game. Rashad White, Bucky Irving, and obviously Sean Tucker. Those those guys are going to be involved. So when you talk about a guy like Trey Palmer, there may be some inconsistency, right? We're not going to get Mike Evans production. We're not going to get Chris Godwin production. But these are receivers like Trey Palmer is a guy you can pick up and potentially have a flex play moving forward. And I also think that about Jalen McMillan as well. Mm -hmm. And this is a player I liked even during the, the, the preseason, the the pre-draft process, P, I talked about him a lot. Uh, Jalen McMillan was, you know, a player that probably would have been a first round receiver had he not been injured in college. And so he goes to a very nice situation here with Baker Mayfield, who, who will open it up. And I think we'll give him some opportunity in the passing game. He did have, uh, you know, he had a ton of targets in the game and, you know, it was obviously on the field once, even once uh, Mike Evans got hurt, he was still on the field. Yeah. And we've even seen him at times have opportunity early in the year. He had a touchdown grab that he had, and in that same game, he had one that he dropped. So you, we can expect some rookie mistakes here, some rookie production, but I think Jalen McMillan has a really nice opportunity. And if I was picking out of the two, Trey Palmer and Jalen McMillan, I would rather have McMillan for the upside. I think this is a, a really good receiver that slipped in the draft and has an opportunity to be a weak flex potentially a wide receiver three on this team if baker decides to show, uh, show some trust in him trust yeah i agree with you on that of the two trey palmer and Jalen mcmillan i would prioritize Jalen mcmillan you know he fits almost seamlessly into that chris godman role right really working out of the slot you know this team relies heavily out of the slot wide receiver as you can see chris godwin's production this year in college 67 percent of his uh of his you know of his routes were coming out of the slot 
He's a silky smooth guy, and he also dropped a touchdown last night as well. So um, of the two, I'm definitely prioritizing uh, Jalen McMillan, and he's probably somebody who I'm spending maybe 15 20% of my fab on. Yeah, good uh, good buy right now. And I think this is a time where we're looking for options right now, especially. We're not the only people looking for options, P. Like, teams yeah. are looking to trade for options. Mm. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins, is he worth holding? Is a question that came into the chat. And there was, there's was there been some rumors now. Obviously, the Titans not doing so well. Potential trade candidates, him, Cooper Cup. We're starting to see more names emerge on the trade scene. Do you think DeAndre Hopkins is worth holding for in case of a trade? <laughs> Yeah, that's a little gem I was going to drop earlier. I do think he is worth a hold. If you think about the injuries that have happened, right? There are injuries at the wide receiver position from potential playoff teams. These teams do want to keep hope alive. Um, so I wouldn't be, you know, I, I definitely would not uh, be surprised if he gets traded to either Tampa or even either San Fran. There was also, you know, some post made about that as well so right now they can get him for relatively cheap maybe a fifth maybe a sixth round pick um and he can step into either one of these roles that's going to instantly boost his value if he were to get traded to any one of those teams um you know you're looking at somebody who who you could start in your flex maybe even your wide receiver three position yeah, definitely a quarterback upgrade wherever he goes in a situation. And, you know, sometimes that's it, right? It's just about, like, getting the upgrade. But it also depends on, like, how long these guys are, are out, right? One of the – we had this question that came in, is trade Kareem Hunt for Debo Samuel? And it's like that's a tricky thing because Kareem Hunt is showing himself right now as a high-end RB2 in his Chiefs offense. But Debo Samuel, we don't know how long he's going to be out. It could be a week. It could be two or three weeks. There's talks that he has to increase his respiratory, like get his breathing right. So um, it's not just a sickness that is going to keep him out for, you know, uh, it's it's a short term. Like this could potentially be something that lasts a little longer. So be careful. Like if you need a receiver right now or maybe you're an elite team and that's why you're asking that, you got Kareem Hunt for free. I don't mind doing a deal for Debo Samuel. Just make sure you're not doing that deal with the anticipation that he's going to be playing this week and be 100% back to normal. I do think Debo Samuel, when he's on the field, though, is going to show more of that top 12 to 10 value um, with, Brent, with Brandon Ayuk being out. Another number receiver that was traded, P, was Amari Cooper. But on that same Bills team, we saw a, a really good performance out of a receiver there. Talk to me about Keon Coleman and why he's on your list of uh, pickups this week. Yeah, Keon Coleman, a great pickup, in my opinion, you know, with Amari Cooper coming over there and really showing out. Amari Cooper's, look, let's make it, it, there's no doubt about it. Amari Cooper's going to be the number one wide receiver there, right? He's going to be commanding also the number one corners and, you know, having coverage roll over to him. I actually think that Keon Coleman is going to fit a lot better being the number two wide receiver and taking on, you know, their second or third uh, cornerbacks, right? The opposing team. So you can see that in how he actually, you know, just his his style of play and how he fits in that offense. He's not the fastest guy, but he's big bodied and he can go up and get it. Right. So if he's doing that against teams, numbers two or three corners, then I, I think he's going to have a lot more success and actually getting the opportunity to learn, you know, from an Amari Cooper, uh, somebody who is polished in, in their in their route running uh, ability and whatnot, what have you. That's only going to benefit Keon Coleman. You can see here 125 yards in, in week seven, which is most out of any wide receiver. Right. So uh, I, while I don't anticipate that moving forward, like that type that level of consistency. I would not be surprised if you could see a, a huge uptick in his red zone targets and his touchdown. So Keon Coleman, somebody I would look for. And with all of these names and all these injuries that we're talking about, you could probably get Keon Coleman for uh, for pretty cheap. So a pretty good value right there. Yeah, and a lot of people probably panic dropped him after Amari Cooper was traded. So there may be an opportunity there. The thing is now, if you're going to trade for him, uh, I'm not sure that you would, you'd want to trade at the value right now, right? Obviously, it's going to be at, yeah. at a high. But Josh Allen, I think this is going to open up the passing game, which was the whole goal of getting Amari Cooper. And it wouldn't surprise me to see him carry flex value along the way. It's not like Josh Allen is this bad quarterback that can't support two receivers. He just ain't had the receiving core. And so now when you have Amari Cooper who could take a little bit of that pressure off Keon Coleman and give him those secondary matchups. I, I do see a path here for a player I was kind of excited about once he got a little bit more opportunity. Um, he's been at Josh Allen's talked him up. They still got Khalil Shakir. So I just assume overall this passing game is going to be a little bit better. 
probably will deal with some inconsistency, right? You're going to deal with some inconsistency out of Keon Coleman. But he's a name that if he has a couple of strong performances, you might be able to count as a weekly flex. Pete, before we go on to the next player, though, how much fab are you spending on a guy like Keon Coleman? Because, you know, he's one of those players where the name is there, but we do know there's probably going to be some highs and lows when it comes to him for the rest of the season. Yeah, so I'm going to I'm going to dedicate maybe like, you know, not not the highest amount. You know, there's other people out there that people are excited about. So, I think you could get them relatively cheap, but I'm looking at dropping maybe 5% of my fab, you know, uh, you know, 4 or 5% of my fab if like if we're talking about $100, $5, $4, something like that and I think you'd be able to come away with him. Um, I just think the other names that are here with, for example, like Jawan Jennings, your league, if he's out there in your league, people are probably salivating just based off of that, based off that one performance that he had uh, in the past when he did have the starting role, right? So, and, you know, for good reason. I think Jawan Jennings is probably the better grab out of the two. So uh, you, I do think you can you can get away with Keon Coleman for, for a pretty good value. And that's the thing, right? When it, especially when it comes to Fab at this point in the year, you're probably going to be reeking a desperation if you lost to Brandon Ayuk, if you lost to Chris Godwin. You're like, man, my season. You know, a lot of teams because of the inconsistencies are going to be around four and three, three and four. There's a lot of those teams, so you're probably reeling right now. Like, I need to get this player. Just know there's a lot of good options this week. We just dropped five really good receivers here that have potential, that have floor, that have upside, that have ceiling. Like. There, you don't have to panic and try to get them all. Just find one that fits your budget and make sure you have budget for the rest of the year. That's one of the things I can say is there's going to be more of these injuries throughout the year. We're only heading into week eight right now. We're only midway through the regular fantasy season. So uh, do not panic. And if you're looking for maybe a little bit more value, there's a guy I really like on, on Cleveland. And I've, you know, on our other show, P, I've, I've talked about him a little bit. Cedric Tillman, big body receiver for the Cleveland Browns. When Amari Cooper was traded, obviously, to the Bills, it opened up things for that offense. But now it created additional opportunity here for the Cleveland Browns. And Cedric Tillman was the one who took advantage of it over this weekend. And I think, you know, you know, the the fantasy community might not know the name or might not think it's a real thing, especially with Deshaun Watson going out for the year. It's not like he was great anyway, but this could be a thing where we see immediate wide receiver three value. The Browns talked about him all offseason and said this was a guy they wanted to see more out of. Um, and, you know, they even brought in Jerry Judy. They have had Elijah Moore, and his name consistently was brought up. He had 12 targets in the game, eight catches and 81 yards. And I think there's a lot more here from especially if, you know, I know the option right now is it DTR, is it Jameis? Like if Jameis starts, Jameis will sling the ball to whoever's open. And they've had, uh, had to assume that they had some chemistry here uh, working with the second unit. So, I think right now, if you're looking for like a player who has maybe more upside than you're thinking, Cedric Tillman is a name that I would not be sleeping on um, as, as somebody as this Browns team continues to probably lose football games. He looks like the real deal. And over this offseason, I thought, you know, if he had an opportunity, he would take advantage of it. I think Cedric Tillman is one of the better names you could buy at the receiver position this week. Love it. Love it. Love the Cedric Tillman pick. You know, you mentioned if Jameis is in, he's going to sling it to anybody who's, um, you know, anybody who's open and he will, right? Like he came in that last drive and really threw a touchdown, but even DTR, even if it's DTR that starts, right? So DTR and Cedric Tillman, they're childhood friends. That's a gem that not really, not many people know. So there's already that chemistry there. So I don't, it doesn't matter to me when I'm looking at Cedric Tillman, it doesn't matter who's going to start at quarterback. I think he is the he is going to be the number one there. Uh, obviously, they have the tight end and Joku who who shined himself. Um, you got Jerry Judy who was disgruntled, and then when he did get a target, you know, hit him in his chest and he dropped it. So, I think that the Browns are. <laughs> yeah, I think the Browns are really like leaning towards these players who are you know just ready to play. You know, if you're disgruntled, you know, suck it up. You know, get with the program or, you know, we're, or we're going to do something with you, bro. So I like the Cedric Tillman pick. I like that pick. Yeah, love the pick up there. And, you know, there's just a, a lot of, I would just say a lot of options here at receivers. So don't feel overly panicked. Like if you need to make a move, do it. But don't feel overly panicked. Like you have to get one of these guys. I think they all offer roster ability and they all offer different type of flex, flex type appeal, in my opinion. With that being said, though, one of the questions is that we got was, are running backs on the rise? And mm -hmm. 
Mm. I think you could kind of sense that heading into drafts this year that the running back position was starting to become a little bit more undervalued, right? Even in real football, we saw more receivers go in the first round this year than we ever have. Like normally the first round is full of stud running backs. And I think we've always assumed injuries with running backs in the past. We're, we saw it last year with quarterbacks. We're seeing it at a major scale this year at the receiver position. Are you putting a premium on the running backs that you have right now? There's not a whole lot of just st- Derrick Henry's and Saquon Barkley's and Alvin Kamara's out there. The list cuts. When you get to about RB15, it becomes a lot more questionable. Are you valuing the running back position more this year than than in previous years? I think you have to. You know, I think you have to just, you know, you always have to adjust, right? Whether I, fa- I, I valued wide receivers prior to the draft and you know midway midway through the season you have to start to look towards what running backs are actually doing right we have more consistency at the running back position even when some people like your Bijans and your Brees is a few a few weeks back everybody was calling them a bust now they look like some of the more consistent running backs as of late and there's and their uh their schedules also lighten up so uh i i you know i can go that route right i you know me personally i'm always going to prioritize getting top wide receivers and just kind of test my luck with running backs because you could always find running backs who are going to be productive that you can have mainstays in your lineup later in the draft more so than you can wide receivers right you see that with your jk dobbins um etc yeah. so um i'm still of the i'm still of the mind to kind of prioritize wide receivers but you cannot deny that running backs are on the rise real quick trade question that came in for dynasty purposes would you trade tyreek dynasty. for marvin harrison jr and a first in dynasty marvin harrison and a first in dynasty are you kidding me absolutely i would if i was win now if i was rebuilding it does not matter if you can acquire marvin harrison who will put up tyreek hill production for the rest of his career and get a first round pick you do that move instantly get it speaking done i love the dynasty though, talk yeah love speaking of dynasty talk and youth man one of the the unsung heroes of this first half of the season has been Jaden daniels uh obviously a great dynasty pick but just a good redraft pick in general was a top three quarterback along the way recently got hurt dealing with a rib injury so we're unsure of the status of Jaden daniels but the good thing is we have seen some quarterbacks now come out of this thing and and we have some potential candidates here Do, is there a quarterback that you're you're looking at this week on waivers yeah you know whereas a lot of people have been going down with injuries um we got people coming back right so uh hey. you know Tua if he's out there <laughs> if Tua is out there I am a big fan. I think you should grab Tua. Uh, obviously, coming back with his injury, he is going to light up that entire offense. Um, I think I seen a stat out there on just the, uh, their offense in general, scoring like on average eleven points a game or something along the lines of that. Uh, historic lows. Tua is going to bring all of that stuff back up. So, you know, he's coming back. You know, we could all praise all you know your Tyreeks, your Jalen Waddles. You know, your H hands, all of those guys are going to come back to life. So uh, and the person who's at the head of that, all of those weapons is generally the person you're going to want to have. So right now I'm showing he's around uh, under 50 percent owned. This is somebody who you can grab, whether you're in uh, single quarterback leagues. I doubt he's going to be out there in two quarterback or super flex leagues, but he's somebody you can look out for because, you know, in the preseason, we thought that his schedule, go, you know, on the second half was going to be kind of treacherous and a little scary. But now that we see how the schedule is kind of playing out and how teams are kind of playing out, um, it's it's not looking as bad. So um, I like to have him come back. And honestly, I'd want to see him coming back wearing one of those protective helmets. If he makes the decision not to, <laughs> I can't fault him. But I mean, come on, bro, put one of those put one of those you guardian put caps that guardian on, man. On, man. <laughs> I think uh, got to put know, the guardian this, on, bro. He said it's a I personal think choice. He's the not guardian cap wait. for you to it. Like throw that thing on, man. Make it stylish. But I'm um, like, bro, you talking a little way, reckless baby. right now. A little I reckless mean, right know. now. Like I'm not uh, going to wear. Yeah. I don't know, man. Hopefully he goes and he don't need to wear. He says it's a personal choice. Obviously, we just want to see Tua healthy on the field. That's the most mm-hmm. important part, man. So 
It is a personal choice, but I get it, man. He's one of the players that you could pick up and get QB1 value out of immediately right now, especially if you're dealing with an injury at quarterback or maybe you had Anthony Richardson and he hasn't lived up to expectations. Go get to it right now because once he shows it on the field, you're not going to be able to get him at that cost again. And to it, when it, the one thing you you know you got to worry about injury. He's also had a historic like second half fall off, right? So I think yeah. when it comes to to his value, you got to make sure like you know you might want to strike while the iron's hot. If he comes back and he looks amazing, that might also be a point where you can now pawn him off in a trade. So I'm not saying you need to trade him. I'm not saying you need to do it. Just Pay attention to how he does coming back from this injury. He may not be the same player. He, he may play a little differently or may take him a little bit to get up to speed after coming back from the injury. So I think with Tua, you can call him a back-end QB1, high-end QB2 on most weeks just with the offense in general. But at the same time, at the same time, it, it's like there's some risk there associated yeah. with Tua Tagovailoa. I want to talk about one more quarterback, and then we'll get into a couple more questions. One of them that came in earlier was like we were talking about Russell Wilson and Drake May. Russell Wilson is going to be phenomenal for this Steeler team. Phenomenal. And I think one of the things about Russ that people always assume is like, <clears throat> is that he's bad, is that he makes, you know, he has turnovers or he was playing on that Broncos team. And so he's washed up. And that's like the one thing he's older. Russ was cooking. They always say let Russ cook. Russ was cooking uh, in against a very tough New York Jets defense. This is what the Steelers' offense has been missing the entire year. And you look at the weapons on this team in Pat Fryermuth. You look at a George Pickens. You look at a Najee Harrison, a Jalen Warren in the backfield, coached by Arthur Smith. Like, for everything that people want to say about Arthur Smith as a head coach, he is a great offensive coordinator. And it, mm -hmm. this this offense is set up perfectly for Russ, who had over 250 yards passing, had two touchdowns in his debut. Like, didn't even need a warm-up. Didn't need preseason. He was ready to go coming off the injury. I think Russ is an every week high-end QB, too, and probably will have some splash weeks here, especially against soft secondaries. Because we know George Pickens can go get it. He's finding guys like Van Jefferson for TD. So, I think with Russ and these weapons, Jalen Warren's getting a little bit healthier. I think Pat Fryermuth has figured out his role. They paid him this offseason. Like, Russ is really set up for success, and I want to say these options for the Steelers are going to be a lot better, too. So if you got Najee, mm -hmm. if you got Pickens, if you got Fryermuth, it's trending up for all these guys. Unlimited. Yeah. Mr. Unlimited. We'll probably see some more uh, Subway subway commercials out of him. But, uh, but no, I love the pick. I love him uh, I, when it comes to uh, just his value. Uh, and the fact that he did it on a Jets uh, – against the Jets defense too. Man, he was cooking them, you know. And the fact that he can elevate all of those players, you know, there's always those questions about, you know, why are you sitting Justin Fields, man? We're four and two. Right. You can see he actually runs the offense to a degree that Justin Fields couldn't. Right. Getting all these players involved. You don't have any disgruntled uh, George Pickens anymore um, and boosts his value to, you know, back end wide receiver two, wide receiver three. Uh, but let me ask you something about about Russell Wilson's. As far as fab goes, how much are you dropping if he's out there? How much are you spending on him? Like, let's say in a, a, a one QB league. In a single QB league, I don't think the priority is as high because he does profile to me as like a top 15-ish type quarterback, right? And obviously, like you got – you have George Pickens on the scene, but there's not a whole lot of like other names out there. I think he'll be a very consistent player. So where I mm -hmm. tier him is probably around like the Kirk Cousins. Jerry, you know, Jared Goff is starting to push that envelope a little bit. But around the Kirk Cousins, around the Dak Prescotts, the Jared Goffs. And I think he's kind of in that realm, but a little bit less ceiling than some of those guys have. The one thing we didn't really even see out of Russ in this game was his mobile ability because normally Russ will run too. So I think he provides a good like high-end QB2 tier. If I'm spending fab, I'm trying not to spend too much, maybe up to 5%. Like, unless I absolutely needed a quarterback, he's got a buy coming up in week nine as well. I'd be careful with the fab, but I would also be aggressive in trying to go get him. Yeah, love it, love it. Uh, you know, one of these questions actually came in the chat regarding Russell Wilson. You taking Russell Wilson or Bo Nix? Russ, just for the floor. You take you got to take Russ just, for the floor. Yeah. Like, that's – you yeah. want to – you Russ taking Bo Nix, right? Hell nah, man. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> respectfully, obviously, respectfully. Give me rest, bro. 
Well, it's time for these trades, man. We have a few trade questions in the comments. And I think this is a good time too, because when you talk about trades, you oftentimes right now, we're going to get the winning teams offering like three pieces and the other teams offering two and the winning teams offering two pieces and the losing teams offering one. So one of the questions that came in was Lamar and Najee for Tyreek Hill. And obviously with Tua coming back, you just talked about it. That's going to make this offense explode. Would you trade Lamar and Najee for Tyreek Hill? That's a great question. I'd like to see what the format is. Um, I doubt that that would be like if look, in a single QB league, I'm probably going to make that trade. I'm just higher on Tyreek. And I think that the what's going to be out there or maybe like your second QB will make up the difference in points. I, I do believe that, you know, Tua's second half struggles are noted, right? Uh, it, but I, I also believe that Tyreek, it's hard to pass that up because Tyreek has game winning ability from the wide receiver position. Like uh, if you can get a, if you can get a player like that, I think he'll be a top three wide receiver moving forward with a healthy Tua. That's somebody I would take. Like, you know, you can give a quarterback and somebody like Najee, who's, you know, probably your, you know, wide receiver or running back three to get a top three wide receiver. So I, that's a move that I would make 100%. Yeah. I think that's a move I'd make as well. Like Tyreek, he's he's obviously like one of those guys you put him in your lineups. It's star power. It's tough trading Lamar, though. I'll say that. Very tough trading Lamar. Uh, yes, another sir. trade question that came in. Tony Pollard and Kareem Hunt. Obviously, two backs have been playing well for Malik Neighbors and Rashad White. Who wins this deal? Obviously, the upside receiver in Neighbors. And Tony Pollard, Kareem Hunt, you're getting the better of the backs. Um, <clears throat> give me Neighbors and Rashad White. Uh, you know, Tony Pollard and Hunt provide safer floors, but neighbors and white, like neighbors specifically screams upside. White is going to be get a lot more involved, a lot more catches with all the injuries that they got. Uh, give me the latter. It seems like a pretty clean deal to me, actually. Like I think Malik neighbors, you probably missed your selling high point with him a few weeks ago, but it seems like a pretty clean deal. I would rather have the neighbor side just for the upside. What about Kyron and Jerry Judy for Brian Robinson, Devonte Smith and David Njoku? We're talking about those three for two deals. Kyron, obviously mm. the best player in the deal, but getting Brian Robinson, Devonte Smith and Njoku here on the back end, all you're tossing in is Jerry Judy. I, I kind of like getting that Devonte Smith side. I think we're buying low on a Devonte Smith. And if you need a tight end, getting David Njoku here is a solid move. It's just, this is, this is more of a move. If you need depth, if you don't need the depth, you go get the stud in Kyron. Yeah, I could tell you one to just looking at this deal. Uh, the it's the Brian Robinson, Devontae Smith, and Njoku owner is probably like five and two. You know what I'm saying? They're probably a winning yeah. league. I, I would I, I would get I would take Kyron and Judy. You know, I love Brian Robinson, what he did, uh, but I think that his playoff schedule, the fantasy playoff schedule, is pretty rough. And that's that is this thing where it's week eight now. This is the time, for, especially for the winning teams. You got to look at opportunities like that. All right, last one. We You talked about Keon Coleman earlier. Is Josh Downs a player you would drop for Keon Coleman? Because I think right now with Anthony Richardson starting, that looks like a clear drop for me. Yeah, Josh Downs is just never – he's like a flash in a pan guy. You know, he's, he's going to be the guy that you start him, he gets you, you know, one, two fantasy points. When he's on your bench, he explodes for like 25, right? Let somebody else – let that be somebody else's problem. Uh, get a little bit more consistency with Keon Coleman. So, yeah, I'm making that move. Yeah, very similar upside too with Keon Coleman. Another receiver, P, that's been playing pretty well right now for the Green Bay Packers after uh, showing a little frustration a couple weeks ago. Romeo Dobbs, bro. Talk about him, man. Talk about him. He's, yeah. been, he's been balling. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's – is with this Green Bay team, it's always like, you know, which wide receiver am I going to start? Which one's going to go off? Whose turn is it? You know, Romeo Dobbs, he's, you know, probably the more, uh, you know, the, the veteran wide receiver there, got benched came back and has been consistent, right? He looks like one of the more traditional wide receivers in this offense. You know, he's not just, he's not just like a, a deep ball guy. He's not somebody who's going to, uh, you know, play a little bit of running back here and there. He's somebody who's going to, you know, do a nice curl route, doing some nice out routes, get those first downs and get those touchdowns. A crisp route runner, traditional guy. This is somebody who I do think moving forward is going to be probably the most consistent uh, wide receiver out of the bunch may not have the ceilings of your Jaden Reeds, right? But consistency in a high powered offense, 
is something that you can get, especially if it's on the waiver wire. He's something, somebody that you should definitely prioritize. You can see 50% owned. That's somebody that I would definitely prioritize. You know, if you can get him out there, I think it's a good ad. The thing is, he just really carries a lot of flex appeal. He's shown over the last two weeks, though, like when you score 19 and 17 fantasy points, you belong in lineups. He's a tough, a tough player to trust, though, because of all the weapons on this Green Bay team. Now, mm -hmm. it's obvious they've made a priority to, like, get him involved after his disappointment the last couple, you know, getting suspended for that week. But I think that might have been more of just like a, hey, we hear you. Let's get you fed. You're involved in the offense. And so I have concerns about him ceiling wise the rest of the year. He might be one of those inconsistent plays across the across the season. But the one thing is he normally like last season, at least he provided a weekly like a flex type of appeal. He just didn't provide like the upside of a wide receiver, too, yeah. which a lot of times you want to see. So I think safety wise, he's there or if you're desperate, especially after losing a wide receiver this week, it, it seems like a good fit there. So I'm not mad at the Romeo Dobbs pick. And then one last pick here, P, uh, before we answer the rest of these questions up, man. Uh, one last pick here, Drake May, man. Drake May. And we talked about quarterbacks already. We talked about Tua and Russ. But Drake May might be a name that people aren't fully buying in yet. More of like that Bo Nix. I want to see it for a couple weeks. The crazy part with Drake May is that we have seen it. For two straight weeks now, he's he's put up the ball over 30 times, pass attempt-wise. He's put up over 30 pass attempts in back-to-back -back weeks, scored 20 fantasy points in back-to-back -back weeks. And to be honest, we ain't even seen him really rushing the ball yet, which was another part of his game that added the fantasy appeal. And, I mean, we're getting Dan Marino comparisons yeah. here, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's crazy. Another DM here, but Drake Dan May, too. obviously playing at a good level on a team that's going to be losing a lot of football games. So if he's going to get this kind of passing volume, if he has the rushing upside, if – I know it was against too bad – you know, the, the Texans aren't a terrible defense. I know Jacksonville is. But if we can see good performances out of him, even in this tough AFC East, I just don't see a reason why he can't return at least QB2 value. He reminds me a lot of, like, a poor man's Josh Allen. Just going to get a little bit on the ground, has the big arm and a threat every week. I don't know that he's Josh Allen, at least in the short term. But I think he can provide like weekly high end QB two upside. Yeah, I mean these are some crazy name drops we got here. We got Dan Marino, we got Josh Allen. What are we talking? We're talking about Drake May, right? So, you know, I mean, I do see your point. You know, one of the things that he's got going for him is the fact that he's on a terrible team, right? If you're a rookie, you're on a terrible team that's probably going to lose. They're going to give you the green light to kind of air it out, figure th figure things out. Uh, you know, the next few weeks against the Jets, against Tennessee, against Chicago. Those are all going to be tough matchups. So uh, as far as like how you can prioritize, listen, if in your super flex leagues, this guy should not be on the waiver wire, right? No. In your one quarterback leagues, deeper leagues or whatnot, what have you, I can see that. Uh, you could probably pick him up for cheap, but he should not be on the waiver wire in like super flex or two quarterback leagues. So, uh, but like I mentioned, the best thing going for him, a young quarterback on a terrible team, that gives them the green light to kind of air it out. I mean, we've seen these all these rookie quarterbacks have kind of come in and surprise Caleb, Jaden Daniels. We even see Bo Nix play well at times. Like, they've all kind of come in and surprised. So I think part of what you alluded to is schedule. Like, I'm not saying he's an every week QB2 or QB1 even, but I think there's going to yeah. be weeks where he shocks us and he does play well. And I think if you're dealing with injuries at the quarterback position, this might be the time to just, if he's available, he's only 18% rostered, this might be the time to just stash him on, on your bench if you need a secondary quarterback or maybe you're looking for some upside. And say you have a C.J. Stroud who just hasn't been playing at that elite level. Say you have a Dak Prescott who's been a little bit middling. Say you have Baker Mayfield who or Brock Purdy who both just lost their starting receivers and you're looking for a little bit more upside in case it sticks. I think Drake May is a good player to pair up with those guys to give you guys like a little bit better upside. So I don't think he's an every week QB1. Could he develop into that just off the peer volume? potentially and i'm willing to risk that and hold him on the roster so overall we gave you guys some good names i want to do i do want to get to a few questions and then we'll recap all the players here um as far as backup quarterbacks p you know sometimes people have have guys like kirk cousins or they'll have a jared goff or you'll have one of these other middling names are you dropping those players for russell for russell wilson or like talk to me what kind of players quarterback wise are you willing to be like eh, i'd rather have russ over them I mean, it, you know, Goff and Cousins, I'm I'm prioritizing over Russell, right? These these those are both high powered offenses. Uh, Russ 
you know, they looked really good against the Jets. I don't see this team being in the top, like, 10 in scoring, whereas I do see Atlanta and uh, Detroit being that. So, no, I'm definitely prioritizing Goff over Cousins, or Goff and Cousins over Russ. If I am going to drop somebody, obviously, if I have, um, like, the Tennessee quarterbacks, whichever one's going to be starting, yeah, Will Levis we'll or yeah. Rudolph. Yeah, so I drop one of them for Russ. Um, I do think Russ, although it's, you know, although Russ is good and he showed out, I see him, I see his ceiling being a little bit more capped, where his floor is a little higher. He's probably going to be averaging somewhere around 15 fantasy points per game. You know, that's about right. And the thing is, we talked about the ceiling when I, when we talked about Russ. And I think that's the area where like Jared Goff and Kirk Cousins have a little bit more. Um, even like an Aaron Rodgers, that's kind of the tier where I'll start thinking about Russell Wilson. But I, I think for the most part, if he's not a top 15, like Kirk, Kirk and Goff right now are top 15 plays. If yeah. he's not a top 15 guy, maybe I'm considering dropping him for Russ. Uh, what about Javante Williams? Javante Williams, he had a, a, an incredible game on Thursday. But, um, you know, he's a tough player to trust, right? Obviously, Audric Estime is back. He looked like a powerful back in that game. They've run multiple backs. There's been trade rumors about Alvin Kamara. A lot of things with this Broncos offense. Are you trusting him as a weekly flex, a weekly RB2? Because to me, P, I ain't going to lie to you. He's a, that's a player I might want to sell high on because of the inconsistencies. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If you have him, you want to sell high on him. Um, you know, if you don't, if you have no buyers, I think that you have to trust him because – you know, although he has been inconsistent, he has fumbled and whatnot, what have you. Sean Payton knows how to get the most out of a running back. And I just – it's just a matter of – it's just a, a fact of he's just better than anybody – any other running back on his team right now, on the Denver Broncos. So they have – like there's not, there's not too many options that the Broncos have to, you know, rely on. So they're going to have to rely on him. I will sell high because I, you know, don't count out a trade for the Denver Broncos at this moment. You know, there's some some, uh, some trade. He would have to. He would have to play. Around. I think he earned himself a couple of weeks there, though, bro. Like the, the performance he had. He earned, the thing is, just this team doesn't put up a whole lot of points. So that's the one thing I'd be yeah. worried about flex wise. Is that for every one of those weeks, you're getting three eight point weeks out of Javante Williams. <laughs> Real quick, another one came in about. <laughs> another one came in about rest, though. What about Anthony Richardson? A disappointing name here, all fantasy here, man. It's been, you know, I kind of alluded to it earlier, but I wanted to touch on this one because Anthony Richardson still has the upside if things click. <laughs> He's a tough player to have right now, though, man. Like, you know, because we know the value is there, and I think everybody drafted him as like a top five to seven guy. So the draft capital is there. We're in week eight now. I still am taking Anthony Richardson over Russ. I think that's a little too much, but – I understand the question fully, but I'm still taking Anthony Richardson over Russ. Yeah, tough one, right? You, you feel, yeah, you just feel in your gut like, man, I got to drop this guy. Anthony Richardson is not somebody you drop. Anthony Richardson is somebody that you trade for the for the person to the person who's still a believer, JM. But uh, um, yeah. but no, like you can't drop him. For, <laughs> you can't drop you can't drop Anthony Richardson for Russ. Um, no, you you just can't. No, crazy. it's one of those things, man. It's tough right now. It's tough dropping players. Real rapid fire on Jalen McMillan, a player we talked about earlier. Who would you rather have, Jalen McMillan or Tyler Algier? Uh, give me McMillan. Yeah, I'm taking Jalen McMillan over Tyler Algier. Algier could go. Mm -hmm. What about DeAndre Hopkins? DeAndre Hopkins or Jalen McMillan? Ooh, this one's close. Uh, I think Jalen McMillan for right now, but if there's a way you can grab them both, if there's somebody else that you can drop, then take him, but uh, uh, I, I, I give me Jalen McMillan right now. But don't be surprised if the only Hopkins thing trade. is, P, if that trade comes up, now we're talking yeah. about DeAndre Hopkins in a whole new light. If he goes to Tampa or if there's another team that does trade for him, I would rather have Jalen McMillan right now. But that's a very yeah. interesting debate because I think uh, he's the kind of player that his value would increase a lot if he moves teams. Oh, um, and then okay. what about Tank Bigsby? You you think Tank Bigsby's a guy over ETN because he's looked the part, feels like it's it's his backfield now. <laughs> and even when ETN gets back, it, it feels like the Tank Bigsby show now. Yeah, I think there's definitely a role for Tank Bigsby. Um, they got to win with Tank Bigsby on the back of Tank Bigsby. So that's going to speak volumes. They haven't been winning with ETN. They ain't been winning with ETN at all. So 
What about in, and I think for these, like a lot of these players, right? Your Ricky Pearsalls, your Juwan Jennings, your Trey Palm, all these receivers that we talked about. If you're looking at guys that have been like losing their role, what about a guy like Alan Lazard, right? Or Khalil Shakir. Are you taking these receivers, especially a guy like Jalen McMillan, who does have opportunity? Are you dropping guys like Lazar, like Shakir, some of these guys that may have performed earlier in the year, but look like their roles have changed as the season has gone on? Yeah, you know, I'm, Lazard is a clear drop for me for any one of these guys. You know, he roll he goes into a number the number three wide receiver on his team. He goes into that role. So whereas he may be better in real football for fantasy purposes, he's not going to be useful for you. You want the upside in fantasy football. And I think that's what you got to chase here. And Jalen McMillan will provide some upside. So it's all about that. Like if you miss on him, you miss on him. But at the end of the day, if you're a player that lost, you know, you lost to Debo Samuel, you lost to Brandon Ayuk, you lost to Godwin, you lost to Evans. You got a lot of questions about that. We offered some good, some good talent here. So just want to recap real quick these, these mm -hmm. waiver options. For week eight, we went over Ricky Pearsall, Jawan Jennings, both for the 49ers, Trey Palmer and Jalen McMillan, both for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We got Keon Coleman and Cedric Tillman. And then quarterback position, we got Tua. Uh, Tug of Iloa, we have Russell Wilson, obviously Romeo Dobbs for the Packers, and then Drake May down there at the NP. With a lot of questions here, obviously, it's been a rough season, I'll say this, fantasy-wise. It's been one of those seasons where you've had to adjust. You've had to make moves on the fly. Talk to me, man. Any 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 advice out here for the people who are probably panicking or looking at it and saying, I hate this fantasy season right now? Yeah, you know, just some quick advice here for you guys. You know, it's 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 tough to say don't panic with all of these injuries and what we're seeing that we're people that we're losing, but it's how you're going to be successful is your mid game management, right? So trades, explore them. Waivers, explore them. Don't ever get emotionally attached to your players that you've drafted. If they have value, at least hear people out. At least try to get the most out of them especially if you're a losing team, you know, you want to make the playoffs. These are things that you have to do. You have to make trades. And one of the biggest things that hold people back is people being emotionally attached to the players that they draft. So cut that. And in a few weeks, you're going to be extremely happy. Words of wisdom, man. Do not hold on to your draft day values. At, at some point, the goal has to be just get to the playoffs and give yourself a chance with the best roster possible. So if you're a winning team, I think this is the time to start looking ahead slightly. I wouldn't put all my chips in the basket, but start looking ahead. If you're a losing team, like he said, get on a train right now and, and, and tra talk trades. Make, make aggressive moves. Do whatever you can to get a win here over the next couple of weeks. So this isn't going to be the last of our waiver sessions. This is going to be the last of the injuries. So make sure you guys, you know, keep ahead throughout this season. Although it's been a difficult season, it will probably be a very rewarding season at the end of the end. And me and P are here to, to guide you along the way. Until the next one, we will see you guys. Peace out.